Hey guys, it's John P. Did you know you can use BitTorrent to sync all your devices? Well, welcome to Geeky. Okay guys, I'm pretty excited about this because uh, BitTorrent is really growing into all kinds of other things. They're introducing new types of services. It's not just your old public file sharing service anymore. They've got products like BitTorrent Sync, which will allow you to privately sync all of your devices, keeping your data out of the public firestorm. And I've actually got Eric here from BitTorrent who's gonna chat with us today. Hey Eric, how you doing? Hey John, how you doing? It's great to be with you. Excellent, thanks for joining me. Um, I remember about, I don't know, was it maybe six months ago you pinged me and you said, hey, We've got this new application called Sync that you should take a look at. And uh, I said, okay, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. I installed it, not thinking much about it because I've never been a big BitTorrent user. Uh, and all of a sudden, Sync became my default method of, of syncing my Android phone to my laptop. It was amazing. Well, you know, we, we built Sync on top of what we've been doing here at BitTorrent for the last decade or more. Um, and, you know, the technology is excellent. It was built to move large things over the Internet. And when you need to sync files, um, sometimes uh, cloud storage services just are not, are not good enough or fast enough to move really large things. So, you know, we built BitTorrent Sync here. Um, out of an internal hackathon, uh, a few of our uh, engineers here built it to solve their problem, and we put it out on our lab site a little over a year ago, and uh, it's grown to a point where you know it's now been installed over 10 million times, and a lot of people are using it. And um, Crazy. and you know it uh, it just allows you to easily move things privately between two or more devices and keep them in sync. Um, and you know we're now taking that next step, and instead of just you know proving out the technology of it, uh, you know now making it easy for uh, more and more people to use. Yeah, working on the interface. So, uh, as you mentioned, you know, uh, certain reasons why some people might want to use this technology. There's, there's certainly a, a broad variety of them. For me, the actual instigator was uh, the uh, Samsung devices, which I use a Samsung camera yeah. uh, in my phone here will not sync to the laptop wirelessly unless you use a particular product made by Samsung called Keys. And that's fine, except that that application is very finicky and it stopped working altogether on me. And that was right about the time that you had pinged me. And I thought, well, let me try this BitTorrent sync thing. So I put that in the background. It turns out that uh, when sync is running, not only is it lighter and faster on my device, but the transfer rate between my phone and my laptop to get the images off of it is way, way faster. I don't understand why, but it is. And so that's, that was what got me initially started uh, using the product. And then I discovered that I could do other stuff, like uh, there was a folder on my laptop that I wanted to sync with my phone, not just backing my, my pictures off my phone up onto my computer, but actually taking a directory and syncing it to my phone. And I just added it in and bang, it started working. And so, uh, you know, then we started thinking, well, services like Dropbox make us put our content in the cloud, and then it uses a ton of bandwidth going back and forth, and plus, they charge you for storage, but we've got like a billion Drobos, we've got QNAPs, we've got all these NAS devices. Why use somebody else's storage when we've got our own? Right. So right. what and other uses when, are you seeing people, people use yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, and especially when you're dealing with big things, um, you're right, the round trip uh, to the cloud and back, it's fine with little things, but yeah. with big things, it, it becomes impractical and actually keeps you from doing uh, often what you need to do. And, you know, the, John, the way that, that works. Um, one of the beauties of the BitTorrent protocol, one, it's been it's been proven out billions of times yeah. over the last decade, uh, but it's excellent at allowing two devices to find each other using the most efficient path. So if you've got your Android tablet sitting right next to your 
you know, your MacBook Pro, well, it's on the it's on the local network. It's going to stay on, the traffic's going to stay on the local network. If if let's say you know Callie's halfway around the world and you want to send her the next you know video of you trying to you know slice a watermelon or something, you know, and she's on a cellular network, it's going to use the most efficient path to get from your device to hers. Yeah. Um, and it has a very high success rate of of, of doing that. And I think that's where. Um, you know that's where kind of the magic of it lies, and you, you probably noticed you didn't have to create an account or no. do any of that stuff. It is it's totally private between um, your devices or whoever you you share it with. You're you know you're fully in control. Um, you know you, you asked about some other use cases. You know since sync works uh, doesn't require a connection to the internet. It doesn't require a connection to any server that we host or manage. Um, there's also a lot of use cases that happen just on private networks. So. You know, IT, IT people use Sync to move things between servers that they control. Um, or you can even be, we've seen where people have been uh, in certain parts of the world where they don't have access to the internet and they set up a private network and synchronize files amongst each other, let's say in an educational environment. Um, so there's a lot of power to um, a product like this that works completely privately on any network that um, you know, the cloud can't satisfy. Awesome. Well, one of the things that uh, has been kind of, you mentioned that this was originally developed by some of your engineers in kind of a, you know, lab type environment where they're trying to solve their own problem. And so for those guys, it was easy to use. They have access to the code. They know how everything works. They put together applications and you've been going through iterations. What I noticed was, in the past with the application, if you were a little more technically savvy, it wasn't a problem, but there was, as you mentioned, there's not like a user login. Instead, the system uses kind of, I don't know, randomly generated keys, and you pass these keys around to share directories or files, or that's the way it used to work at least. Mm -hmm. It still works that way at, the, at a foundational level. So each folder has a key, and so if two folder, two or more folders on the network or on the internet have the same key, then it automatically starts syncing. The security is totally, completely at the cryptographic level, and not, uh, you know, based on some uh, central arbiter or some account that you know that that we're managing. Um, that still exists, but now on top of uh, these folders having keys, we created a. Uh, a links system where you can send someone a clickable link, and it and it quickly and easily introduces two, you know two people together, two or more devices together, uh, so they can then start sharing this folder. And then after that connection occurs, then essentially the keys are passed uh, through the protocol, and it starts like it always has. Well, let me see. I think I think Dave has uh, access to my desktop here, and I've got BitTorrent Sync running on my MacBook Air. Uh, so I, I think you could probably see this, uh, this interface. This is the new version of the app, and I've got uh, five different things being synced here. I've got directories on my iPad mini, my Android phone, etc. And maybe we could just walk people a little bit through cool. how, some, how simple some of this is. Yeah, hey John, I see, you know, since you're a true geek, I see you've already customized the interface and you've added <laughs> call for things you like to see. I know. did, I did, and we can, let's show them how to do that. Um, actually, in the preferences, you can go down and it says show columns, and you can just start checking boxes. So that was really cool. I like that because this helped me with the really basic mode didn't have this sending and receiving and progress and so I didn't know if things were happening but when I turn that on when things are syncing these columns light up with with, right. with information yeah and by default um, when those columns are hidden uh, that information is available it's just in a it's in a contextual tooltip like if you hover over the the progress bar it'll show you what's going on oh I see yeah there are little there's lots of little tooltips which is excellent I really like that um, yeah, so you know, once you add a folder, you simply just hit the share button, and uh, and you can send an email to someone, or uh, you know, another popular way is there's a copy button there, so you can copy that link directly to the clipboard and use whatever you want, whether it's through Google Hangout or Skype or however you're communicating with yourself or someone else. Well, let me show them that real quick. So you sure. we we'll click Add Folder, and let's say we just want to share my desktop. I select the desktop and hit Open. And this little window pops up. And what I also like is there's two different, there's read only, and then there's read and write. 
So I guess I could just, uh, like that's sharing my entire desktop. That would sync everything on my desktop. And this is what you're saying, like if I click on copy, it'll right. just copy a link to it or QR code. I really like this one for, for working with your phone because you do that and then you share that uh, or you, you scan it. Actually, let's, yeah. let's make it happen. I'm gonna use my sure. Android phone here. Awesome. So I'm gonna, I think if I'm right, I click the plus folder button here. Yep, and it says scanning QR code. And I just scan that and bang, it says, where do you wanna put the folder? And add it and that's it. Yeah, yeah, and the folder's already pre-named. So in that QR code is the key to the folder and the name of the folder. And uh, and that's it. There's no, uh, you know, it's it's a physical interaction with the device, so um, it's totally secure. Uh, now, when when you if you send a link to someone, we have some security options to ensure that you can keep that link secure while you're sending things using an inefficient or, or I should say an insecure method like yeah. email. So that's where we actually have kind of what we do is, and let me see if I can find that here. Uh, so I've got my desktop down here. Also, I like that it says peers. And it says zero of zero peers. And, and then some of these others, if you look, like one of them here says camera, two of two peers. And when I click on that, it gives me my, my, my iPad mini and my phone. What I did was I want to be able to take pictures on my phone, on my uh, camera on my phone, but I want to be able to view those pictures on my iPad mini. So I set them both to sync my camera directory from my phone and then they showed up there as peers and you can see yeah. it's syncing 1.5 gigabytes 160 files and it just because i did it all over our local network it did it really fast yeah but yeah, also that's right. on your mobile device yeah you know, on your mobile device by default uh, you because we don't want to take up all your uh, mobile device's capacity you kind of sync on demand yeah where you click the file and, it's, and, it, and it sends it over there and then you can also choose to sync the whole folder uh, if you want to keep it, keep all the files um, locally on that device. But on the desktop, you can see actually my screen says I've got 37 gig of data, like it, it's, uh, it's hidden back there, but uh, yeah. zero of zero peers. So that's where I, I would click the share button and send Correct. somebody. Now if I do the email uh, or copy, then it sends that link and then they have to kind of accept it on their end and then do I have one final uh, acceptance process I go through here? Um, you do, it's like sending someone an invite on, uh, on LinkedIn or Skype or something like that. Um, now in that interface, um, there's, a, there's a pull down menu for advanced options. Right, I see that. In there, you can set some security settings with regards to that link. Right. So you can turn, you can turn off approval uh, that bottom checkbox, or you can set the link to expire based on either time or number of uses. So let's say you're going to share it with five people, and you only want to make sure you know five people access it. Um, you can set that to five, and after five, you know it uh, uh, essentially the link self destructs and isn't isn't work isn't usable anymore. And then That's someone awesome. has to ask you for a new link. You know when when you're when you're sharing things directly between people, and you're using things like email. You know, we have to make it secure even when using an insecure, you know, method. Yeah. Like email, because it's just, you know, it's, it's like why people don't want to put uh, their credit cards in, you know, in, in emails. Um, but here you're allowed to use email to share a folder privately and, st you know, still feel confident that, you know, you know who the other person is receiving it. So with approvals on, when they click the link, uh, you get detailed information about, uh, about who they are, their name of their computer, who they are based on what they entered in, as well as the certificate fingerprint of that computer, and then they can actually verify it on their end. So you can even go um, to, to, you know, as some consider, you know, extreme lengths yeah. to ensure that, you know, the two devices are who they are. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, for people who uh, have not seen this before, have not tried it before, I just published a uh, very simple and short uh, tutorial on the GeekBeat website about how to get your phone syncing with your laptop. But the same thing goes for any of these other devices. I've got, uh, let me see here, let me get this up. Um, I've got BitTorrent Sync running here on this Microsoft Windows 8 Surface. Is that uh, really glary for you there? 
<laughs> the interesting thing is the, um, the interface looks basically identical to the Mac interface, which is great. Now, I haven't added any folders on it yet, but I could, for example, go in and have that same camera folder that's syncing over here and syncing to my iPad. I could sync it to my Windows computer as well, right? Yeah, uh, sync works um, you know, any number of ways. Uh, so it's not just syncing between two devices. It's any number of devices. And, um, and it's and it's uh, it's it's you know multi-directional. So um, if you put a file on, let's say you're syncing with five devices, and you put a file on one of them, it will sync with all five at the same time. And one of the beauties of the BitTorrent protocol is that you get accelerated transfers because if you need a file that let's say five other computers have, you pull it simultaneously from all five of those oh. computers. You don't just pull it from one. Or let's say you share something out and and uh, two other devices have it, and then your, your originating device, um, you, you shut the laptop or you shut it down or you go home or whatever. Um, that doesn't need to be on. It can pull from uh, the other devices. I did not realize that. So like here at the uh, Geek House, we have a gigabit internet connection. If we had a folder that was shared with five people, and let's say they were on 100 meg cable connections each, and they all had the file and we shared it here, then it could pull in basically at all their maximums to feed uh, our big pipe here. Yes, that's, that's the big puzzle um, that the BitTorrent protocol solves, which is you know, essentially being able to uh, leverage uh, all that down download bandwidth that people have and maximize that smaller upload bandwidth. All right, that's awesome. Okay, so as I was saying, I got distracted by all the awesomeness, but I published that little article that'll get people started. It'll teach you how to at least get your phone syncing with your laptop. But then after that, you can sync everything with everything else. You can sync uh, Macs, PCs, Linux, Android, iOS, Windows Phone. So some people complain that they get left out, but Windows Phone is in there. Uh, Kindle. Kindle, yeah, Kindle, and also you even have some devices like I noticed QNaps. If somebody has a QNap, yeah. yeah, we're in the we're in we're in the Q, we're in the QNap store. So if yeah. you like you have a QNap device, you can you can quickly just go um, into their interface and install Sync uh, directly there. Like so, you're saying you know if you have um, you know here's another you know with 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 the cloud or with cloud storage products, you know you have to choose all right what's in the cloud and what's not in the cloud. Yeah. And usually what's in the cloud is a lot smaller than what's not. Um, but with BitTorrent Sync, just by simply, let's say, installing um, Sync on your NAS box, now all that data is now available to easily uh, share and sync with other devices and other people. That's awesome. Okay, so how much is this going to cost everybody? So right now, Sync is free. Um, sync is still in beta. 1.4 is in beta. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, we're, quick, we're quickly you know, moving to exit that phase. Um, but one thing I can tell you is that um, what you see today, we're always going to have a we're always going to have an excellent uh, free product. It's what we do here at, here at BitTorrent. So there's going to be things we're going to develop on top of Sync to, uh, you know, to to make some money out of it, okay. um, and to be able to support the investment that we're putting in into Sync. But uh, there's going to be uh, you know a, a, you know a good part of this product that's always uh, it's always free. Well, that is awesome. So I remember way back in the day, years ago. There were some other uh, technologies that came out that enabled us to do some syncing things, and they have kind of come and gone over the years and uh, frustrated people that they were not around anymore. This one, I am going to assume, is going to be around forever because BitTorrent has, is big and has been around for a long time, and so I hope that this is something we can install and use for decades to come. If you guys haven't tried it yet, you just really need to uh, head on over to the GeekBeat website and check out that article I, I did. Otherwise, just do a Google search on BitTorrent Sync or it's just BitTorrent.com. Is that where it is, Eric? Yeah, you, you can get it from BitTorrent.com. Uh, you can also get it from GetSync.com. Okay. And uh, yeah, or just Google uh, Google Sync or Google Google BitTorrent Sync, and uh, and the product will come up as well as the uh, the awesome article you wrote uh, today. Nice. Product, so. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, let us know how you like it. Give it a try and give us some feedback. Drop some comments below if you like it. And if you find any cool new use cases, I'd love to hear it. We'll share it with everybody else. So, Eric, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thanks to all of you for watching. Tune in later. Thumbs up on YouTube. I'm out of here. This car is super fun. We had a huge smile on our faces, huge wheels, huge. <laughs> they don't have to be there to show you because the court does it for you. It lays out.